This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the wonderful Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA on a sunny day. Okay, it's a little cloudy. Uh, but it's not about the weather, it's about the awesome things we're talking about. This is where we talk with awesome people in and outside of Pittsburgh doing awesome things around technology, around social media, around entertainment. And we're talking about a lot of theater and some spooky theater here today. And we'll get to that in a moment. But first, please check out everything, including past interviews and the main show of The Awesome Cast at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to The Awesome Chat uh, specifically on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Play Podcasts. And the video versions are over on the Awesome Cast Facebook and YouTube page. And please join the festivities on our, our main show for the Awesome Cast uh, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live.awesomecast.net, or simply go to our Facebook page or anywhere else we might be streaming. There's a lot of those these days. Uh, so, my guest this week, uh, we just had a, a great interview over our Fishing Without Bait, uh, which uh, you'll be seeing over the coming weeks as well so please go subscribe to fishingwithoutbait.com uh and with uh joanna Lowe joining us here in the studio she's doing um i want to say just all things theater and entertainment and music right <laughs> at this <laughs> point things. does that seem right is that a good <laughs> good good umbrella for yeah, you <laughs> yeah we, I, I can i can slip under that umbrella. yeah 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 so what, what is the tagline when people say so what do you do where do you um, start <laughs> like pick an area and i'll talk about that exactly yeah you want me to? Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah, just generally. What? Okay, what do I do? Well, I'm a I'm a spoken word entertainment wise. I'm a spoken word artist, an actor, and a director, and I'm founder and artistic director of Cup of Joe Productions, uh, a theater company. But we are an alternative theater company. We've built a reputation for doing immersive and uh, adventurous theater. My two big mission statements are one of collaboration, where I can have an idea that I think is good, but without people to help me accomplish it, it's worthless. Mm -hmm. So I, I like creating the opportunity for other people to shine. So collaboration is the big one. The other one is that we are a multimedia theater company. And so we like to promote and use other medias, both to heighten the experience for the audience, but also again, to further collaboration. And it creates a new spin on, I'm a classically trained actor, but I've realized in the last few years, what I am trying to do is tear theater away from that very sterile structure that has become boring and i don't believe in boring theater so uh our so so <laughs> so it's less uh go into the theater and and sitting and just watching and being a part of it. It, you, you know, it it's more you want you want to kind of i don't know uh a visceral uh, experience yeah, yeah yeah yes that's that's exactly right i want a visceral experience i want to make people uncomfortable i want to hit them where it hurts or where it where it changes where mm -hmm. it changes a perspective and um and so we've we've really and we've built a reputation as being that like what are they going to do to make this mm -hmm. different or or um a better experience for the audience. Uh, I definitely specifically want to uh, talk about the unhinged thing here in a moment. Yes. That's, that's it's happening right now here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, but tell me a little bit about your past productions and some of the different ways you've been approaching theater over the years. Well, uh, this time last year, we were doing Titus Andronicus, Shakespeare's most violent play, in the backyard of a personal art studio with an original live rock band uh, and one of the performances was in an absolute downpour. We had a live rock band doing the soundtrack, and I had actors in white hazmat suits using buckets of blood in order to represent the the violence. The um, it was an absolute. I, I still get chills thinking about it. I can't believe that we did it, but it was it was. Elevated. It was beyond the uh, Shakespeare's most violent play. The reason why we, I got asked, why are we doing this in this climate right now? And um, 
the theme that I wanted to extract was to show audience that you always have a choice for mercy. Mm. And while uh, people will do a lot in the name of justice, it's vengeance. And anytime you choose vengeance over mercy, you've screwed yourself and you've made the world a worse place. And you see that play out in Titus. Somebody begs for mercy and he says no. And from then on, it's death, destruction, death, destruction, death, destruction, all the way, destruction, all the way to the end. (laughs) And so I had the cast put on these white suits. And every time, instead of using knives and swords, every time a character would do an action that would sentence that person to death, or kill another person. I had them dip their hand in a bucket of blood, mark that person, kill them, and then mark themselves. So by the end of the play, everybody is covered in blood, whether because they've been killed or because they are responsible for so much death. And then I have everybody remove and all to this crazy rock score. Um, and at the end, I have them tear off the suits and the cast recited the the mercy speech from a different Shakespeare play. So the value of mercy. Um, the cast did all of this in a uh, in a bed. We filled a driveway, this massive driveway in this art gallery studio with mulch. And the cast did classical Shakespeare in mulch in a backyard. And I got I got messages from cast members going, I blew my nose last night and legit all that came out was mulch. Uh, You would not believe where I pulled this pile of mulch out from and they weren't complaining and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this cast of beautiful people, you know, was, uh, was rolling around in, in mulch and buckets of blood (laughs) in rain and the audience came and sat there under umbrellas absolutely wrapped. I was, wow. it was tremendous. And I had one lady sitting on the ground wearing like a rain parka. And she was like, Nope, I'm just going to sit here. And I want to experience it this way. I had two audience members refusing umbrellas. They just sat in chairs in the downpour because they wanted the absolute raw. I was blown away. That's amazing. That, and I've just had a recent conversation with a random person about theater here in the area and, uh, you know, about how people are just looking for different experiences, it seems. And, and I, I want to provide it. I'm angry and I'm bored mm-hmm. by, oh, it's just a stage with, oh, in that play? Why would you choose that play? It says nothing new. It says nothing new. And I, uh, I pick pieces that speak to me, whether it's humor or hurt or uh, discomfort. Um, and then I think how we can how we can tear it away from the structure. A uh, couple years ago, we did a modern adaptation of Chekhov's Three Sisters. It was called The Sisters. It was set in modern times, or at least mm, the 90s. And uh, in order to really drop the audience into this experience, they were the play takes place mostly in the lounge of a, an Ivy League university. So we set it in the upstairs Lincoln Gallery in the Carnegie Museum and Music Hall, except not down on the stage. It was in the Lincoln Gallery. So they're surrounded by these rare Lincoln photographs. It spoke to that high elevated thinking, this university feel. And we had the audience walk into an individual, a solo cello concert that was a friend of mine playing cello and then she also provided the soundtrack to the radio in front of the audience and so we were walking around very close to them in this non-traditional it wasn't a theater space at all but we wanted to elevate the room and the best compliment I got was we were in the room with you guys we were in the study you dropped us into the middle and I went well good that's what I wanted to do Mm -hmm. okay and it it made everything that much more close. The emotions that much more visceral. We're not out here. And we really did that over and beyond. I was immensely, just immensely pleased. Uh, last, this past April, we did Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Uh, one of the theater canons, you know, you grow up hearing about that. And of course, Elizabeth Taylor won the Academy Award for her portrayal in that film. Uh The only way that I wanted to produce that was if we put the audience in the same living room 
as the actors. The whole play takes place in a living room, two couples viscerally tearing each other apart. And I thought, well, why does the audience get to be a voyeur to that? I want them in the living room with them, just as uncomfortable as these characters are. And we did. We did Virginia Woolf in a living room. And I I mean, so they literally got sprayed with our drinks, with our spit, when I was sobbing at somebody's feet. And again, it was one of the best compliments I got afterward was people kept saying, I can't imagine this any other way now, Mm -hmm. any other way. And it did. It brought the play instead of being this distanced sort of elevated high theater, it made it two really messed up couples airing mm-hmm. all of their dirt and being broken humans. It sounds like you're doing something in real like, you know, especially around our show. Of course, we talk a lot about technology and about how people say play video games and it's just on a flat screen in front of them. But now we're putting VR and now we're inside the game. So you're kind of doing that in the real physical space in theater experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I and I, I think that's what brings value to it. If you don't have something new to say and with all of the distractions that we have, with all I, I want to, I want to reach people's hearts. I want to mm-hmm. get their attention, mm-hmm. and I don't really feel like there's any point in going like, "Well, we've seen this before. Good job. That was a good performance." And well, why do we what? need a, another general Shakespeare production, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Without without something new to say or new to feel. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my one tiny contribution to the universe of trying to make trying to make theater new again, tear it away from the structure in order. Theater started as being something scary to talk about scary things that were happening. Mm -hmm. And now it's become this boring thing again that I'm trying to tear away and make scary again. That's awesome. Speaking of scary, let's talk about Unhinged. Okay. Um, Really, you were describing it a little bit after our last recording here, and it caught my attention. Because it's I'm more so kind of Halloween, you know, it's, yeah. it, it, it's it's something different. Explain this concept. Okay. Well, Pittsburgh is a Halloween town. This town is obsessed with it, and it's dark, and of course, the history lends itself to Halloween. But nobody's doing Halloween theater, and I wanted to change that. What we are doing, and to our knowledge, it has not been done before. There are walkthrough experiences, and there are mm-hmm. haunts that you walk through, but we are merging an actual theatrical production that you will see actors doing plays, but merged with an actual haunted house. So we are leading an audience in a walkthrough theatrical haunted experience. So um, it will be something that we will actually have theater critics reviewing uh, the entire experience though, not just the plays. That's easy. Here's a play, you can critique that. But I want them to have the entire experience. And um, so we have taken elements from haunted houses and we've, we are interactive and immersive and it's also actual theater. So um, I have team members that have up to 15 years experience in the haunt business and they were over the moon because they were like, you're right, this has never been done before. Mm -hmm. So I was excited from the theatrical standpoint of doing something different. Uh, And they were excited because so often with haunted houses, it's about get the audience through, get the audience through, get the numbers Mm -hmm. through, get the audience through. And they had been disappointed because you never really get to sit with an experience well, we are giving people that opportunity. You get some creeps, you get some jump scares, but you also get to sit in the environment of an experience. So um, I'm I'm thrilled to try this for the first time. This year is the launch of an event. Um, Unhinged will happen every Halloween, and we want to spread the word now because we're doing something different, and mm-hmm. we think that haunted house lovers will love this event, and theater people will love this event, and we are trying to cross-contaminate, you know, from, from all of the different circles as possible. It's not uh, as long as a normal theater is, so people that don't like to, to um, you know, sit in a theater and watch boring stuff, mm-hmm. they can walk through our experience and hit the scare house at the same time. We're blocks from the scare house. So they should 
hit us both and they can still have a date night. They can still go out and see a movie. Yeah, can pre- you can have a dinner. pretty good Halloween night in Etna over there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they should. They should. That's amazing. So you spend 20 minutes at the scare house and then come spend 40 minutes with us. And then mm-hmm. you still have the rest of your evening. We have late night performances and normal theater curtain times. Yeah. So. And, and that's saying, and speaking of scares, because I remember, you know, I, I just got to see, you know, their basement, mm-hmm. uh, which is, again, more interactive, uh, probably a walkthrough closer to theatrical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and I remember when that came out, uh, um, and, and I think with a lot of things that you talk about, the, the, the issue is always explaining it to people to come check out, right? And, I, and I'm sure you've run into a lot of times, you know, and, and, and you know, he, you know, seeing the event and say, oh, what's this unhinged thing? And maybe not investing and reading through, but right. actually hearing you explain it. Kind of was like, oh no, that's interesting. Oh, I'm you know? so glad. I'm so glad. And that's <laughs> but what... but but it's that that kind of thing, you know, like the basement. You know, a lot of people wouldn't go. Be like, oh, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. What is it? That sounds a little weird. And right. Invest into that kind of thing. Um, uh, what are you doing to kind of get that out there in interesting ways to? Because again, there is a little bit of barrier to new experiences yeah, like this. There really is, and it's frustrating. I mean, as with with all theater events, it's how are we marketing? How are we getting this out there? Okay, let's try to be in the paper. Well, we got spotlighted in city paper this past week. That was great. Um, That gets all over the city. Mm -hmm. We've put out physical flyers. That was something that I had abandoned a while ago to be like, well, if we get in the papers and we put on social media, that'll kind of, but this where I was like, we've got to reach people. We, this will not be sustained on theater the theater community alone. Mm-hmm. We're not doing who's afraid of Virginia Woolf. You, you need to re- you need to reach outside of that. Yeah. yeah. And we, we're struggling to break through that. And of course, you know, the first year will always be that. Oh yeah. I heard about that. I heard how cool that was. I need to do it next year. We want people to come this year so that we can be successful next year, <laughs> successful this year. Absolutely. Um, and it'll only get, I mean, the sky's the limit. The thing is, is what we are able to do, give you know final dress last night was one of those like i can't believe we did this we had all of these plans and we did it but our expectations and dreams are well beyond and this is just the first year of what we hope will become something like genuinely incredible it's already something this is the kind of theater that i want to go through i'm a little jealous where i'm like (laughs) i i want this experience but then i would be jealous that i didn't come up with the idea so i'm i'm really proud i'm really thrilled and the team that has put this together because again like it's just Mm -hmm. an idea and without all of them coming together and doing it Mm -hmm. i'd just be some girl with an idea um, obviously, these are a lot of very unique concepts. Are you seeing anything like this, or or maybe a step below this that inspired this in other in other cities that 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 you kind of see out there? No, I've I've heard of um, not nearly to this extent. I I've seen like uh, Christmas productions if they're in a mansion and you can meet and get some mulled wine or cider, mm-hmm. and then you go and see this production. And then you can walk through and see a little. So it's walk through, but there's no connective tissue. Okay. And we have built the connective tissue that is the haunt element mm-hmm. where you actually walk through. And it's never like, now if you'd like to move to this room. And I know that there's theater where it might be in a parking garage or another mansion where you can see theater here in a non traditional space and follow a character but you're following the actor into their character. You're not totally, we're, we're doing an immersive, mm-hmm. if I'm making sense. So it's non-traditional, but we've also built this immersive world and it's interactive. So we have characters interacting with the audience. We have, um, we have some things that we're like, just as a warning, this is going to be or might be happening to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a walkthrough. And so you never leave the world of that. And we are able to really give haunt elements on on the travel to these theatrical experiences. That's awesome. So to our knowledge, it's never been done before. And planning this out was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was terrifying, <laughs> but fun. That's awesome. It's yeah. so much fun. I, and of course, this is uh, mid to late, uh, uh, mid to late uh, October as we're recording this and releasing this. Uh, so uh, where can people, if they're catching this in time, 
go find out more and uh, maybe look uh, to become a part of this. Yeah, cupofjoeproductions.com. Also, uh, Cup of Joe Productions Facebook page. Mm-hmm. All the information is there. We have partnered with Pittsburgh Fringe, and we feel like it's an amazing partnership because they are always, you know, fringe theater, exciting new theater. They thought this was a phenomenal idea. And so we've partnered with them. For, for those that don't know Pittsburgh Fringe, mm-hmm. like what are they known for in the area? Well, uh, they started the first Fringe Festival, uh, which is now famous in Edinburgh, Scotland, but the first Fringe Festival here in Pittsburgh, and that was four years ago. And Cup of Joe Productions was involved the first year and has been every year since. And uh, it's right up our alley. If, if it's not new and interesting or scary, then there's no point in really doing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Fringe Festival supports that new and exciting theater. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and if people are catching this, you know, because we, we, we try to put this out throughout the year and everything, but uh, if people are maybe catching this past the season, uh, what else can they look for that you guys maybe have in the works coming up here? Well, definitely not on the, the spooky side, but <laughs> our plan for um, early summer, spring, early summer, is we're going to do a very our version of James and the Giant Peach. Ooh. I grew up on Roald Dahl. He is weird and dark and hysterical, but mm-hmm. also whimsical. Mm-hmm. And I I absolutely love it. And and I it's it's not your everyday children's books. And so we're doing our version of James and the Giant Peach. I have somebody writing original music for it. Um, we are going to be using a lot of dance elements. And that'll be, uh, we are also pairing up with a local soap company. They're going to be making a special soap for dirty boys and girls in order to promote our James and the Giant Peach production. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. (laughs) That's great. Again, it's kind of that crossover thing, right? Yes. Yeah. That's great. All right. Uh, again, check out everything, Cup of Joe Productions and, 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 uh, your social media and everything coming up, right? Yeah. And we do have shows on Halloween as well, not just Fridays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. We are open on Halloween to bring you all of our spooky goodness. There you go. If you want to avoid giving candy out to all those kids in your neighborhood, get out to this. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much, Joanna, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Go check it out and check out all the rest of the interviews, like I said, over at awesomecast.com or check out the feed on your favorite podcast provider for the awesome chat. A lot of great interviews with podcasters, tech people, and people doing just fun things here in the Pittsburgh area and outside sometimes as well. Uh, and of course, if you guys dig this stuff, please support us on patreon.com slash awesome cast. You can contribute to the show. You get some goodies and uh, some special messages from us and extra content. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.